a lot is finally happening in the political space right now. Everywhere scatter in Nigeria a few hours ago, after this video finally showcased in the early half today, you know, a lot of people have been pointing a negative finger on Mama Yakub that is the only orchestrator of all the shenanigans and the electoral malpractices that took place in course of the 2020 election. They are now sustainable as the president of Nigeria. But a video I finally showcased now that exposed who really wrote the electoral results. They never wanted this video to come out, but the video I finally showcased on media and a lot of Nigerians have been reacting and have been agitating in the early hour of today because it is not only Mama Yakubu, they write the result and gave it to Mama Yakubu. That was what happened in the course of the election. What Mama Yakubu only did as INEC chairman was to announce the electoral result, but who wrote it are finally be exposed. So I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video to see what really transpired in the course of the election. Who wrote this thing? You will not ever imagine it. You will not imagine who wrote this thing in the course of the election that caused a lot of troubles to Nigeria. So I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video. If you can share this video, ensure you share. Share to the defensive stream in that platform. So let it go viral. And if you can share it, just like it as you're watching it, like it, give it a thumb up. So that will be recommended for us. We'll be there. Stay connected. I'm coming back again. Welcome you back to Lajibong Wash TV. I don't have bad news for you today. The truth of religious gossip. And if you should leave the fight for Mohammed. What is happening in the Christian world? Join now. Hello my great and wonderful viewers, we are coming back to Lachupo Watch TV. For those of you coming across this channel for the very first time, ensure you click the rest of the subscription button appearing on your video screen and do well to click the notification bell icon so that whenever we drop a new video in a few hours time, YouTube will easily notify you. A lot is happening in the political zone right now. Bola and Meti Numbo is shaking right now I missed the video that showcased in the early after the, you know, a lot of things happened in the course of the election and the secret of what happened in the course of the election have finally been revealed, you know, a lot of people actually believe that it was INEC chairman Mamo Yakubu was the orchestrator of all the electoral malpractice this is all the shenanigans and everything that happened in the course of the election because it was Mama Yakubu that announced the number as the president of Nigeria in the course of the election amidst all the electoral irregularities and all of that. But the secret have finally been revealed in the early after the who wrote the result out for Mama Yakubu to announce have finally been unveiled. And a lot of Nigerians never believed that it can be this same person, this same man, wolves in sheep clothing that finally do this thing. A lot of Nigerians couldn't believe their ears and believe their eyes in the early after they win this video showcase online because they never believe that this man can be the one that write the electoral result and gave it to Mama Yakubu to announce. But you will see everything in this video. So I would like us to stick connected to the end of this video. If you can share this video, so watching it, share it so that YouTube will recommend it. Share to the best social media platforms. Let it go viral. And if you can share it, just like it as a watching, like it, give it a thumb up so that it will be recommended for us. You know, I missed everything that happened in the course of the election. A lot of things happened and a lot of irregularities, electoral man practices, and the election was wasn't free and fair as promised by Mamo Yakubu INEC chairman. He promised that election will be credible and the election will be free and fair. That was why a lot of people actually pulled out to vote and some people even came to Nigeria to come and cast their vote to their preferred candidate. But at the end of the day, their expectation wasn't met and all of that. They never knew that such thing can happen in Nigeria election. So they rated that election, even international community rated that election as the worst election that can ever happen in Nigeria. That that's the worst election that ever take place in Nigeria where talks were coming to different police units and telling people that if you're not voting for APC you go back to your house if you know that you are voting for Labour Party don't bother to come out talks came out on live televisions before the election day and they made a public declaration and police were even defending them but at the end of the day the police said the talks were just plain they were just ranting and all of that but the day of the election the talks came out to perpetrate their evil and all of that where they were in different police units when police was even there they were chasing people back to their has because the people said they're not voting for APC and all of that. So that's to tell you that all those talks are APC talks and all of that. And I was saying it in course of the election. I was saying that the one that the northern part of Nigeria is silent at the moment, that is that something tragic is happening in the northern part of Nigeria. But at the end of the day, when the video came out regarding what is going on in the northern part of Nigeria, we saw underage 
actually voting. Children of eight years, seven years, six years were casting votes in the northern part of Nigeria. They lined up on a very long line and they were all holding PVC to cast their votes. Now the question out there is, where are these children seeing PVC? Because according to Nigerian law, if you are not up to 18 years, you can't have a voter's card. But these kids that are of eight years, nine years, ten years, six years, seven years, they were having voter's card. Where did they see it? Where are all these electoral practices coming from? But to talk about that, a police commissioner came out at the end of the day and made it not to the general public that those children that we were seeing in course of the election that were casting vote that we can never detect their age. That some kids are young in face but they are old in age and all of that. Now tell me, if you see an eight-year-old child that cannot even speak audibly well, their voices, their speech is not even audible. You know that these ones are kids. Will you say that those ones are just old people with younger face and all of that the police force of nigeria defended all those kids on that age voting going on in the northern part of nigeria now who wrote the electoral result came from the north according to the confession that took place in the early of today who wrote the electoral result and gave to mama yakubu Einek because they were been exposing themselves in the early of today i missed all the clashes that have been happening in apc at the moment whether we like it or not a lot of clashes ongoing in apc right now apc members apc stakeholders are now fighting themselves and the way they're fighting themselves, Tinubu couldn't control it. And at the end of the day, they are beginning to expose their buttocks outside. How Tinubu got into power, the role of each person in the course of the election in the APC, they are now beginning to reveal everything to the general public. Now, who wrote the electoral result and gave to Mamon Yakubu to announce I finally be on this? I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video. Share this video if you can share it. And if you can't share it, just like it. You will see everything that happened in the course of the video. Just stay connected. I'm coming back again. <laughs> Labour Party 2023 presidential candidate Peter Ruby calling for a parliamentary system of government where the president can interface with citizens at least once a month. He spoke at a lecture at Harvard Law School in Boston, Massachusetts, United States of America, where he advocated for a parliamentary system of government in Nigeria. Peter Ruby noted that the presidential system is not working well in Nigeria, hence the country continues to have bad leaders who stay in office for four years without being accountable to the people. He said, in quote, what happens is, because of the presidential system that has no president in Nigeria today, we have a bad leader, and he stays there for months and years. When we have a parliamentary system, we can move a motion of no confidence within two or three years. If we are in a parliamentary system, a president will be a member of parliament, end quote. Elsewhere, the All Progressives Congress National Chairman Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduji has revealed that President Bola Ahmed Tunibu has assured him that his position as the party chairman remains unchanged. Ganduji, while addressing Kano State APC officials at his residence in Abuja, says that he met with President Tunibu on Monday and the president reaffirmed his position as the party's national chairman. The APC had pointed an accusing finger at the Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf of the new Nigerian. People's Party over the purported suspension of the party chairman from his word in the Dawakin Tofa local government area of Kanu State. The party further revealed that Yusuf is sponsoring imposters to cause mayhem in Kanu after, uh, after launching a despicable program of political persecution against Ganduji. In his words, I met with the president and he told me that my position as APC chairman, which the Kanu State government was trying to remove me from, will remain unchanged. He reaffirmed my position as APC National Chairman. Meanwhile, the Kano State High Court has granted an ex parte order restraining the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Ganduji, from parading himself as a member of the party. Subsequently, the court ordered that henceforth Ganduji should desist from presiding over all affairs of the National Working Committee of the APC. The application granted by Justice Usman Naaba on Tuesday followed an ex parte motion filed by Dr. Ibrahim Saad on behalf of the two executive members of Ganduji's ward, da Dawakin Tofa local government area, the assistant secretary Laminu Sani, and the legal advisor Haladu Gwanju, who reserves at the plaintiffs. They were part of the nine ward executives who suspended Ganduji on Monday. The court director of the four parties, who are the respondents in this matter, joined, including the APC, the National Working Committee, APC Kano State Working Committee, and Ganduji to henceforth maintain status quo antebellum as of April 15, 2020. 
2024 pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit on April 30, 2024. Justice Naaba also held as prayed, stopped the State Working Committee APC Kano from interfering with the legally and validly considered decision of executives of Ganduje's ward, essentially an action endorsed by a two-third majority of the executive as provided by the party's constitution. Barrister Fred, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, hello, Barrister Fred. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me for the World News at 12. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good yes. to be with you. Good afternoon. Good to be with you too. Barrister, let's head on into the crux of the matter. We're starting off with Ganduji. Uh, Ganduji earlier disclosed to us, in fact, there was a video via his ex account where he said that President Bola Ahmed Tunibu wants him to the stay. Line, the line, the I, line is muffled. I can, I can, I not clear, please. I can hear you. I well. can hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? No, no, no. It has not improved. I don't have this, but not your voice. Can you hear me adequately now, Barrister Fred? Because I can hear you. <laughs> Hello? Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, um, it has improved slightly, but this needs to be to be better improved. All right, Barrister Fred, I sincerely do apologize. The network has been terrible for the past three days, worse actually. So first of all, I'm saying that Ganduji disclosed that the president wants him to remain as the APC chair. He made that statement while he was speaking with some APC members at his residence. You do know that he's embroiled in financial malfeasance where the governor of Kano, um, that is um, Ubasani, is accusing him of the monies that he was caught with in 2018 being stuck within his um, attire at the time where he was getting the money from the contractor and the FCT too has been called in to investigate uh, Ganduji but Ganduji seemed to be unshaken despite all that has been going on and he came on via his social media to tell us that the president indeed wants him to remain as the APC chairman over the court this morning in Kano to actually ask him to step aside from being the APC chair and stop whatever activity he would carry on as an APC chair. What's your take on this? Well, my take is that um, one, the order of courts at all times must be obeyed. Okay. And uh, we expect that um, Aladdin uh, Ganduje should obey the order of Canon High Court. Um, the only option left to him is to go on appeal against the order or submit himself for for the liberation of the courts on motion on notice because the order was an expected order brought Boswan to made Boswan to an expected motion filed by uh, executive members of um, Cambridge Ward mm -hmm. in the working to a local government area suspending Alaje Danduje from parading himself as a chairman of the party and even membership of the party because he has, his membership was suspended at his ward level. And um, uh, he, has to, he has to respect the order of court. And, but, but, but Barrister and, Fred, with the situation yeah. where he disclosed to his party members at his residence, it, there's a video on that. He actually posted that video. I think he wanted that clarity to be there. Where he was emphasizing that President Bola Tunibu wants him to remain and attain, retain his position as the party chairman and that the decision of the president on him wanting to remain the party chairman remains unchanged. And this was while he was addressing Kano State APC officials at his residence in Abuja just before the court ruling came up today. So if the president has Ganduje's backing to remain as the APC chair and the court order that came in today asking him to step aside and stop parading himself as the APC chair, please, which do you think will hold sway first? Because him publicly coming out to say the president supports me and he wants me to retain my position as the APC chair. Does that super, super imposes the court order of today? It will be preposterous and a breach of the law and um, and uh, neglect of a lawful order of court. If Allah is Ganduje pretends not to know what the court has said or, or tries to deceive himself or his followers by asserting that Mr. President wants him to stay on as the chairman of the party. Um, that is a political statement. Mr. President does not 
make decisions on behalf of the court. Mr. President is not the judge, neither Mr. President is the president a member of the judiciary. So if the court has spoken, it is expected that even the office of the president would encourage and uh, insist that Allah the Gandhi respects the lawful order of court because uh, it cannot be said, it cannot be, it will be on of that Mr. President will support Mr. Gandhi to so neglect, ignore, and disobey lawful orders of court. So but, I think okay. uh, it's, a, it's a very personal, personal statement by Gandhi, which right. should naturally hold no water. Pastor Fred and Zako, Abai Yusuf, the Kano State Governor, according to the APC, they are saying that most of the imbroglio or the challenges that Ganduja is facing is due to the Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf. But here is the thing. What do you think is a logical thing to do? There are videos that actually indicates the evidence that Ganduja actually was stuffing money, dollars in his in his babariga. There are also witnesses to disclose against him in court, if at all they are called in to be as oral or witnesses to, to prove that indeed some monies were exchanged which are considered to be illegal and a couple of financial malfeasance that occurred while he was the governor. So if that is in place, is it not ideal for the National Working Committee of the APC, including the president, to advise Gantuje to step aside? Possibly an internal investigation will be carried out or while the case is cleared out before he's reinstated. Why would the president, despite all of this, being put ahead in case of Gantuje, still affirm his position by saying that Gandhiji's position remains unchanged. Mr. Kalaji Gandhiji must be dropping the name of the president just to, to buoy up his uh, confidence and possibly um, the confidence of his supporters. But Barry Fred, he said he I, went, he said, I just finished meeting with President Tinubu and he told me that my position as the APC chair remains unchanged, that he's backing him it, in that decision. Was the, was, the, was the statement not made by Gandhiji himself? Yes, it was, was it made, made by, by Gandhiji himself. Was it, was it made by Mr. President or the spokesperson to Mr. President? Gandhi just said he just believe, finished meeting with the president. How can we believe that Mr. Gandhi was putting a deadly... Barrister Fred, are we saying that Gandhi... Hello, Barrister Fred. It is on hard of that Mr. President would encourage a, a blatant uh, breach of the law. Barrister Fred, uh, why would you say it's on hard of? of this of was, this was a conversation they had before the Kano State ruling today. Maybe Gandhi went to tell the President that all of the evidences against him are false. And the President says, okay, fine. You are my friend and I know you. I trust you. Why would you say that it is unheard of that the president would not back Ganduje in that in that particular position. Or the voice of the spokesperson of Mr. President. Why would you rely on what Ganja has said? He is a man finds himself sinking in the river or in the in the ocean. He can be crossed at any time. So he can very easily agree that it is name dropping by Mr. So, Mr. Fred, are we saying that there are some officials and some party members who will brazenly carry on anti-party activities and using the president's name to defend whatever it is they are doing? Is, is this a new trend? If you're saying that the president can never uphold or st uh, specify, specifically say, I want you to remain as the APC chair. So it's possible that Ganduja could just be mentioning the president's name if at all the president never actually made that statement. What would you consider that? If Mr. President makes the statement himself, then we can take him on. If we make it to his spokesperson, we can take him on that. We cannot take Mr. President on the statement made by Ganuja, who has been sacked by the court, whose membership has been suspended, and who is uh, uh, being dragged to by his by the government for his perceived uh, or accused uh, alleged wrongdoing while as a governor, while acting as a governor of Kano State. I can tell you that many observers of goodwill and many ideas of goodwill have expected that Mr. Gandhi has 
to come and they give an account of his stewardship. Especially with that thing, we have lost in a video that we put was went viral. So when he was talking about what the current policy in America, of course, he has claimed that he was innocent of the allegation. But the matter was more or less handled politically. Now we want it to be handled judicially. It's only then that we can say that Larry Ganduja is uh, not guilty as charged when the court has so pronounced. My only worry, my only worry I keep saying is that it is not because of the law of the state, but because of the highway politics and the differences that have existed among the political gladiators. And that is why this case is happening. If um, Ganduja's political party, the NPC, had been in power in Kano, do you think that uh, Ganduja will be dragged around to come and give answer to for his um, for his um, stewardship? And that is why we keep saying that irrespective of the party power, we must continue to call the uh, uh, public officials to give account of their stewardship. Yeah, that is Mr. Fred Nzako, let me kindly come in here. Is it not possible that the president can distance himself while whatever investigation needs to be carried out is carried out? Because if the Kano State Court gave the ruling today and asking that Ganduja step aside and stop parading himself as the APC chair, and then of course he met, according to him, he met with the president yesterday and the president is assuring him that he wants him to retain his position as the APC chair. I mean, these are two conflicts conflicting orders and if the president is immersed in this will this help in the public perception that there is a particular aspect or sense of bias when it comes to certain cases that has to do with corruption from the presidency i mean w w what do you think in this in this in this particular scenario president is saying i want you to remain as the apc chair the following day the court says stop parading yourself as the apc chair shouldn't the president have distanced himself at all will gandhiji just say he had a conversation with the president without why actually do, having any why do you why do you believe the statement of the lucha when you have not had it elsewhere from the president i'm not believing that it but he made a video asserting to that conversation and i'm just saying that the president's name shouldn't even be in here in the first place because the case is being investigated so isn't it Gandhi possible Gandhi for his name to be out of ganduja's lips i can i can tell you that he's only preparing ground for to 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 embody him to disobey a lawful court order and that's why he's dropping the name of mr president and the only time we tell where the court order has is not vacated either by appeal or by the same court then um and uh, that's where you begin to to see the the, the, the sound bites for the presidency it is too early to conclude that mr president has given the Ganduja order and i can tell you that it is difficult to believe that mr president will support Ganduja to disobey lawful orders of court the best that the presidency can do is to give him support to go through the courts no, barista, the president did not support it no what i'm saying is this conversation was had yesterday with the president today the court ruling from kano came on so at the time the court ruling hadn't come on yesterday was when the party in the ward of Ganduja suspended him oh, that was two days ago where they said he's no longer he should be suspended and the apc in kano yeah, came to say those yeah, leaders is, are yeah, anti-party yeah, activities yeah. leaders they were involved in anti-party activities the, the mr president may have expressed um, some level of confidence in mr Ganduja when the court order had not come out yes because, and before the court order it was merely political statement by the political gladiators some people suspended Ganduja. some people suspended those who suspended Ganduja because the local government executive of uh, of Dawakin Topa suspended those executive of the war yes. who suspended Ganduja. So these are all political maneuvers. But now that the matter has gone to court and the court has given a valid order, I expect that such order must be respected. And that's why I keep insisting that I do not expect that Mr. President will support Ganduja to disobey the lawful order of court. He uh, said, all right. the, the, best that, the best can be done is to ask that the matter be given expeditions here in court and that that then she would, as a matter of necessity, he's himself as a chairman of the party and as a member of the APC. Then 
Look at Nasir El Rufai, who accused the Northwest governor of writing election results instead of conducting free and fair elections. El Rufai made that disclosure. He said the particular governor approached him on how to conduct fair and fair elections because during his tenure, he conducted fair and fair elections, all right, using the digital method. And then this particular governor came to meet him, but instead of heeding his advice, the part that governor went to write out the election results for that local government. So a lot of critics and netizens ask, so why is Orofi disclosing this now? If he knows that this governor did this, why, why didn't he say something to the relevant authorities to prove that this was an electoral mall practice? Where instead of a, a, a proper uh, and transparent election practice or conduct should be it should have taken or uh, taking place, he went out and then wrote out the election results, meaning that you you declined and disenfranchised a lot of people who came out to vote. So if El Rufai knew this. Why did he not say anything then? Why saying it now? Many of the statements made by El Rufai these days uh, do not carry the weight that they used to carry when he was in office. Uh, the whole statement of the statement of a man who has been frustrated by by failure to achieve his, um, um, his uh, target, uh, especially the target of being a minister, and uh, who seems to be running riots against the, his uh, political party. Now, it, but that, despite that, it is very obvious. It's, it, is, it is not a hidden secret that there is no credible local government election in Nigeria since 1999. I say this with all sense of responsibility that no governor or ex-governor can beat his chest and say he conducted a credible local government election. Long since 1999. And that is why, because of these um, actions of um, of uh, lack of democracy and the level of the local government, a lack of credibility of elections at the local government level, the local government system has been left common to us. Not made worse, made worse essentially by a section of the constitution that has allowed the state and local government joint account, the one they call Jack. And uh, until the standard code of the governors and local government system is released, that system of government, which is very important, crucial, and the closest of the people can never breathe. And no governor, I repeat, can claim to have conducted a credible government election. And that is why in every state of Nigeria, the, the, the party in power wins between 95 and 99 percent of all local government elections. The other five percent or thereabouts is a uh, so that it will look as if there was a contest. All right, Barrister Fred, we, we've actually run out of time. Them, the the, the, the of final, the final the question I want to ask in regards to this case, Barrister Fred and Zako. The final question I want to ask in regards to, in this case is: You have actually come out to the press to disclose that a governor came to meet you to seek your advice on how to conduct a free and credible election. This governor did not apply the advice you gave him rather went and used his hands and wrote down the election results this is what you would call electoral more practice and this is against the backdrop of states electoral commissions as rigging tools in the hands of state governors this approximately reflects on a lot of critics and speculators who also do not trust the system at the federal level when it comes to conducting general elections by the president and for governorship if this particular governor could do this. So the question is if El Rufai who says as a committed and stand up citizen knows this, why is he coming now out now to say this? Why not at that time? So that the due process in terms of investigating this governor can be carried out. Why keep quiet when injustice is being carried out? El Rufai is only trying to romance his ego and remain in the news. 
um, for whatever value he feels he's getting from that. His accusation of um, such a governor writing results is a highly watered one because he's only trying to use that opportunity to impress the public that he conducted an election. We all know that even he, as a governor of Kaduna State, never conducted a credible local government election. And he has not even mentioned the name of the governor. Yes, if he, he dares to mention the name of the governor, I can tell you that the governor will very easily dismiss his allegation and deny his assertion. And that means that it is now his, his voice or his uh, words against the words of the governor. And of course, uh, these are mere political statements that, uh, uh, that, do, that, that do not pass the legal crucible of a judicial examination. If they try to do so, uh, by one, taking the other to court, that's when we will know where the truth is coming from. But I can tell you that these are all mere political statements to carry some um, respect of the public towards himself because, uh, and they remain in the news. Of course, uh, that is exactly what it is uh, because uh, he himself is guilty of what he's accusing the others of, of, of doing. And I can tell you that no governor in Nigeria, I repeat, since 1999, that can be exonerated from manipulation of the local government system and the elections. All right, Barry Sifradin Zako, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for staying connected, my great and wonderful viewers. You can see what is happening in the political space. You can see the electoral irregularities that have been happening in Nigeria, and there is nothing that is being done about this. You know, Aero Fire have been having glitch with Bola and Metinobu. These people have been having clashes and all of that. Even to the extent that Aero Fire, since it's not in office now, and I don't know what caused the mess up between Aero Fire and Tinobu government and all of that, because both of them are all in APC and all of that. But at the end of the day, Aero Fire is not exposed to what really transpired in course of the election and all of that in Nigeria. You know, every five minutes not to the general public that there are some APC people that are writing results for INEC chairman according to the video that you just finished watching right now. You know, it was stated very well that there are a lot of fights that is ongoing in APC and Gandu J as the APC national chairman, they want to remove him and all of that. And Gandu J is trying to affirm himself as the APC national chairman and all of that. And the court is saying that Gandu J should leave the APC national office and all of that. But Gandhi just said Tinubu is affirming his legitimacy as the APC national chairman. But the court said Gandhi should not remain on the national chairman seat of APC, that Gandhi should not parade himself again as a national chairman. But yet he said no. The court order is not his order. That the order that he got from Tinubu is his own finance and all of that. But that's not even the issue. You can see the way the people are ridiculing the judicial system of Nigeria. The judicial system is nothing to them. It's nothing to write to member to them because they have seen the judicial system of Nigeria finish. They've seen it finish. They're not respecting the law again. They're not respecting the rule of law and all of that. The law is only for the common man in Nigeria. It's not working for the rich and all of that. For the court to make an order that Ganduje should not parade himself again as a national chairman just for him to be investigated and all of that. But yet he said no. Even for the fact that they want to investigate him, he's not even shaking and all of that and miss all the alleged corrupt practices that he have done. Now, Erufai came out and made it known to the general public that INEC chairman alone is not to be blamed because of the election. That there are some people that wrote the election result. They wrote the electoral result every time they want to conduct the election. They have been writing this result and they will write it themselves and they will give it to Mamon Yakubu to announce to the general public. Even to the extent that the vote of the people are no more counting. For it to come out in course of the election to go and cast your vote and stay under the hot sun for six hours, seven hours, because I actually did it back then, in course of the 2023 presidential election, staying inside the sun for more than six hours, seven hours, just because I want to cast my vote to my preferred candidate. So for us to just waste our time staying under the sun and casting our vote, and our vote is not counting, is nothing to write home about in Nigeria today. This thing I've been happy and it, it has been reoccurring. For people to be writing electoral results, they will sit down in a place and they will be writing electoral results, because according to what 
Ero Faisal said there is a particular governor in the northern part of Nigeria that light resort that there is no word they tell him that he witnessed it himself that this man writes the result and after writing the result in course of the election he gave it to the INEC to pronounce and the INEC read the result he read the electoral result uh, so it is not only the INEC that is writing the electoral result now the manipulation is coming from some APC officials and all of that and they will write the result and after writing it they will give it to INEC to announce and you will notice that the result that you got in your poly unit is not even what is announced and this alone have been making a lot of Nigerians not to be coming out in course of the election to cast their vote and at the end of the day all these electoral irregularities happen in the presidential election in the state governorship election which is the gubernatorial election and still happening in the local government level election so all these shenanigans keep taking place as far as Nigeria election is concerned and yet Nigeria security agencies that is supposed to be monitoring the electoral team is not doing anything they are not bringing anybody to book even for the fact that Aero 5 come out to announce to the general public that electoral practices electoral results have been written and all of that they will still not investigate the matter i didn't mean that it's a common man they would have called for the person they would have looked for the person and put the person behind the bar they would have tried to put the person in jail that's what is happening in nigeria but in a situation where the corrupt practice is actually coming for the politicians they will not do anything about it that's what is happening they only leave the politicians to real nigeria and live their luxurious lifestyle and do all their criminalities and all their shenanigans so that is what is happening in nigeria they are writing results they will sit down in a place and people will be under the sun people will travel from different places to another and a lot of people have accidents in course of the traveling just because they want to vote for their preferred candidates just because they want to practice their fundamental human rights as a voter in a democratic government so just because they want to cast their vote a lot of people have accidents and knock the way because whether you like it or not if you want to cast your vote you need to travel to your hometown you need to travel to your village and all of that so people travel and they have accidents and some people travel from the diaspora they travel they spend a lot of money for tickets and all of that but at the end of the day the vote of these people will still not count after wasting their time after wasting their precious money after wasting their energy and all of that their vote will still not count because some people are seated in a place and writing result for INEC to announce so that was what happened in course of the 2020 presidential election and it happens in gubernatorial election that was conducted in 2020 and it's still happening in the local government level election and this criminalities is not being attended to and EFCC will be there they will not investigate into the matter we'll be chasing shadows that are not even chasing them so what do you guys think regarding what is happening in APC right now what do you guys think regarding the video that I just finished watching right now so I would like guys to drop your opinion in the comment section of this video feel free to see your mind as I'm going to dedicate another another for you and sure follow me on my social media handles from Facebook at Life Watch TV and Life Entertainment and on Instagram at Lodgeable guess what guys see you in my next video bye Pastor where they bar, where where? Politics are where they do pass me, sir. Probably that. Why are you waiting for church? All as loud you pop was me.